Hello and welcome to another Budget and Legit video. Yes, we have the Audi behind us again. I've done a few videos on how to do the back brakes, on how to do the front brakes, but on the opposite side, because obviously I only film one side, there's no point in filming both sides, it's exactly the same. But on the other side, we had other problems. We've had seized calipers, we've had a caliper at the rear which has got all ripped, which is either half seized or will seize in the next, you know, month or so so there's no point putting it back on and also we've got a problem with the drive shaft so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you taking off front caliper back caliper and drive shaft now this side has been half stripped already because obviously we didn't know until we took it off but if you want to know how to fully strip it if you watch the first video for example if you watch the video on the back brakes we'll show you how to take off the back brakes and then taking off the caliper is just that extra little bit same with the front so you're going to get the idea once you kind of watch both videos what we're going to do, we're going to do the back caliper first. Right, so as you can see, we've got a new disc on. So, you know, you know how to do that. But you can see from this caliper here, someone's wind back the caliper, but they didn't take care in the rubber. And the problem is, see if I can get this, well, it's just, and you can see, it's just completely gone. So, that, if I put this back on, um, it's just going to seize and destroy the new parts we've put on. So we're going to change the caliper because it's all rusty and stuff in here. It's half seized. It's not going to be long until it completely goes. So when you wind back the caliper, you do have to be careful of this rubber seal here. Make sure it's, it's, the, the caliper is twisting freely and this isn't moving. Because what happens is this sticks to the caliper, the piston of the caliper. You turn the piston round and it basically wraps itself and, and breaks. So you need to make sure this stays put and only the cylinder is pushing back. Now we do have the handbrake cable on this which makes it a little bit trickier um, it's normally easy to take the handbrake cable off once it's um, bolted on so what I might do just for easiness sake is just put one bolt back on the actual caliper itself and that'll just, well actually I'll put both of them back only hand tight right hopefully this is coming through okay so what I need to do is this is the brake line, but on this one, I'm not going to be able to squeeze this. This is a different special brake line. So I've only got a couple of options. I need to completely drain the fluid out of this car anyway and replace it. So to be fair for me, it's not actually a big deal. I can just release this, let, put a bowl on the floor, let all the brake fluid come out, which is what I'm going to do because I need to replace the brake fluid in this car. But if you don't do that, what you can do is you can actually push the brake, so take this off, push the brake pedal right down on your car, wedge it between the seat and the brake pedal with some sort of long bar, and after that it will not leak. You'll still need to bleed it, but you, it won't leak all the fluid out. I'm not going to do it that way because I need the fluid to leak out. So I'm going to take off this first. And also it's an important thing to remember when you are getting um, new brake calipers, you have to give the old ones as a trade-in, otherwise you have to pay extra. So just remember that when you go down, whoever you get them off, they're going to want to see the old ones back. And depending if you know them, they might not give you them before you, the new ones before you give the old calipers back. Now this bolt is very tight, even though, I don't know what's happened there, it shouldn't be that tight. It's coming loose now. Right, so I am just literally going to let that hang there, I'm going to put a bowl on the floor and let it go because we have too much water in this uh, brake and the way, the way I know that is um, I've got a little brake tester, I've done a competition video so if you want to see the brake tester the competition video is to win the brake tester so you'll see what it does and how it works so just remember if you're not doing that press the brake pedal all the way, and now you need to press the brake pedal down now wedge it, make sure it stays wedged and that will stop leaking so that's a really handy tip now what I need to do is push this spring back to release the ball in the handbrake there's kind of loads of ways to do it I'm just going to use a big pair of pliers and hopefully this will work I can wedge it between the nut and the actual thing itself shouldn't be that tight there we go oh. so there we go, there we go. Push the ball back, release it out that way, and then let it spring back. 
and now that's released we've got a clip here which again we can use the pliers pull out the clip make sure you don't lose that the handbrake cable then should come out could be a little bit stuck but it should come out that hole it's doing might be easy to do now is if we undo these bolts and actually take the caliper away from it. Now before you give them the caliper back make sure you've taken everything off it that you might need because sometimes like I did a job the other day caliper and there was a little wire or a little pipe connected to the caliper that connected to your car you didn't get that with the new one so just kind of make sure you've got everything now what another good thing to do is check now the handbrake cable isn't seized so you can literally just pull it in and out it should pull in and out really really easy if it doesn't you know you've got a problem there we've greased up them so they're okay that's how you take the front caliper off and this is the front caliper now you can start seeing all this and all the crap that's in there make sure there's nothing left on this you get all this with the new on so we shouldn't have a problem and there we go what I like to do is I'm just going to take off the bleed nipple I like to keep them because you never know they'll have new ones they'll, they'll replace that with a new one anyway so I'm going to whip off that and keep that for myself don't tell anybody Shh. now the front one the problem we had with the front one is it's actually seized the rubber is okay but it's actually seized and someone not that long ago really um, this has obviously been a problem for a while this guy's only just bought this car and he's fixing all these problems so whoever had it before him um, whoever worked on it before he got it this is what I should say uh, this is what I think's happened anyway the, the brake disc on this side compared to the far side was more or less brand new the far side as you saw from that video it had a huge lip on it completely destroyed this one was fed this one was more or less new and the pads look new so what someone had done is this caliper is seized worn down the pads onto the disc which then scratched the disc so they then decided just to replace one side thinking well it's only one side that's gone not realizing or that's what I'm assuming that is the actual caliper that was the problem all along the caliper was seized which wore down the pads and the disc so we're replacing everything we're not going to be messing around just replacing everything so we also need to take off this caliper now this one again if you want to know how to, to take everything else off watch the front us doing the front uh, brakes and that'll give you an idea how to get this off so you can get here so same thing again just uh, this looks like a 13 mil spanner now with this one you can put a clip on it to stop the fluid leaking um, but we don't need to do that and this is the little gadget you use this just goes on clamps down it locks and it stops the fluid coming out but like I said we're completely changing the brake fluid we're flushing everything out so we don't need to worry about that it's actually smaller what size is that because we're going to be borrowing that as well now I'm just going to see if I can crack this just there we go I managed to get that again this is going to leak but like I said we're not bothered for this one there we go and that was simple again front caliper seized so same as the front just make sure there's nothing on it that you're going to need well actually having said that look that's why there is a split oh there is a split in it and there we can clearly see I'm just going to open this up and show you this is what happens when a boot splits if I just pull all that off now I don't know if the camera shows see how rusty that is that's supposed to be polished like a piston in a car because that's essentially what it is is a piston and that has to be really nice and clean so that slides up that little crack in the rubber 
has seized that and make it rusty so that will not slide back which is what's done the damage originally to this side so that's what you have to be very careful of do not damage that rubber it is vitally important you don't do it because of that reason and just by putting new pads and disc on forcing this back yeah I could get that back I could force it back but I'm telling you now it's not going to work at all and there's no point even trying to take that off and clean it because yet yeah, you can take it off yet yeah, you can take the rust off but I guarantee you will not get it 100% it might last two or three weeks it's going to seize again just replace it it's your brakes are so so important people think they're trying to save money and I'm telling you just don't be fucking stupid just replace it you're not saving money at all I promise you replace it you'll have better brakes you won't, will might not die and everybody's happy simple because let's be honest people this this potentially is life threatening you know it, I mean it really is that bad maybe not your life someone else's life it is vitally important do not try and attempt to clean this just replace it take the hit buy a, a reconditioned one and just replace it or to be fair a really good second hand one you don't so much have to go down the reconditioning route it's it is better but it's just that now what do we need to do next right next thing we need to replace we're replacing the full drive shaft on the far side we just replaced the cv joint so again if you want to know how we got to this point watch the video on the brakes and the drive shafts that will then tell you how we got to this point because what we've got off we've disconnected obviously all the brakes and we've disconnected the bottom wishbone so what we need to do is hopefully this is going to come through on camera first well I've, I've loosened everything so you're not going to really hear it but there's a big clunk in the drive shaft and the reason is again it's all because the rubber boot is broken it's been broke for a while once we get it off I can show you a lot clearly I'm just going to take off this bolt first which is a 30 mil Whip that off. We can then release the bottom ball joint, which then will release this for me. And kind of get that out of the way. And now, what I can do is again. I'll have to get the camera in a different position, but we can now start undoing these bolts. Now I don't know how well you're going to see. But what I'm using is an M10 spline and I've got this huge extension as you can see, massive extension. Now I've had to uh, slightly modify it a bit because the ball's missing so it slops off. So a bit of tape holds it all together. And then what I can do is I can actually reach it from here as you can see and I'm just going to get a half inch ratchet on the other end. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know how much is coming through on camera. But when you step back you can just see, I don't know, that might be a bit better. You can just see exactly what I'm going to be doing. So you can see the bar I'm using, but before I do that, I've shot on another video on doing a, a seal on an A3, a gearbox seal. I, I've done a different way of locking this drive shaft. But this time what I'm going to use, I'm just going to get a vice grip and just put it directly to the shaft. And hopefully the vice grip will hit against the wishbone, which should, just see that there, hit against the wishbones, which should hopefully stop this from spinning. That's the plan. So it's going to hit the wishbone there now. And there we go. There's going to be six of these. Don't need to completely come out like that. It's not really a big deal. This is the bolt. They don't need to completely come out. Just enough to get out from the cup. So I'll do one more. Like you have to make sure you are definitely in the hole, 100% in the hole, um, because if this is a half on or if it's at an angle and it slips and it rounds the inside, you're going to have a nightmare of getting it off. So same thing again, now the rice grips have come off. What I'm going to do, is no point filming this because I don't think you can really see anyway, I'm going to get these six bolts, once I get the six bolts off I'll turn the camera back on and uh, we'll get this uh, drive shaft out. Right, that should be them all out now, so this now should just come out doesn't maybe got a couple of threads on one of them still now 
this is why you should look after your rubbers because they can cause you problems in more than one way. Yes, never let your rubbers split. Ah, well here we go. And as you can see, completely split, well apart from there, but more or less all the way around. And the wear that's in there, all the grease has come out and just wearing the, the, the bearings inside there. So yeah, complete new drive shaft. Lovely. Again, you have to take this back, um, take out the bolts, because sometimes you get the bolt for it, sometimes you don't. But you have to trade in your old drive shaft to get your new one back out. Now, as you can see, we're back with a brand new shiny drive shaft. So we get the complete drive shaft. It's all pre-sealed. Well, once I cut this cable tie off, this can fall off. But this, it's sealed, it's greased. It's all greased in here. It's ready to go. It's the easiest way to do it, especially with... Uh, the problem we had with this one because what happened with our one is because this boot was split here not only did it it, it it wore the cup as well as the bearing so it's just easy to replace everything so you do need to be careful this doesn't come off it's not a big deal if it does it just can get quite messy so what we need to do is line it up first make sure it doesn't fall off That should be lined up. Just going to rest, rest it on the carrier there, and hope we just get one bolt in anyway. We use the big long extension again. But just bear in mind when you do put a bolt on, you need to put this little clamp on. Well, it's not really a clamp; it's just a little like a it's a load spreader, so it spreads the load around the complete area. So you need to make sure that's on before the bolt goes up. Two bolts go through one little clamp or spreader, shall I say? Now, so I could just take a bit of just fine twisting just to get it. It's the camera. I'm just struggling with the camera angles at the minute, so I'll try and get it as best I can. You should get the idea. It's just a case of getting it lined up properly and it could just be a couple of millets off but that is all it takes not to go in so all I was doing is just twisting the drive shaft by hand just a few millet at a time just to make sure and then I felt it go in so I should now be able to just get a couple of threads in I'm not going to tighten any till I get all six of them in. But we can just kind of squeeze them by hand a little bit. So the next one that goes in, I don't need to use this little clamp because you get two bolts per the little load spreader. So now, depending on where I am, it might be easy to put these two in next. But that doesn't really matter as such. And to be fair, it is going to be easier for me to put this one in with a little clamp on next. Now we're definitely lined up because two bolts have gone in, which is good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to completely turn this round, 180 degrees, so I can get one of the bottom ones on. Just like that. You can get stuck by the rubber if you don't have in an exactly right position the rubber can actually stop the bolt going in so just might need to turn it a little bit more if you're struggling to get the bolt in pass the rubber so like i said these aren't tight because we need to put the other bolts in if you tighten one one of them up if that little washer isn't in the right position you're going to have to loosen it again to get the second bolt in so put them all in before you do any type of tightening. Now you can tighten them two ways it might be easier with the disc on to actually lock the wheel but as you can see 
this bar will get in the way of the disc. So there's a couple of different ways of doing it and we'll see which one's easier when we get to it. It's easier to use the big long bar than it is to use a smaller bar and get in but then it's easier to lock the wheel with the disc on so there's just a couple we can actually we might have another way what I can do is I can put the drive shaft in put some vice grips on this coupling here I think we'll do it that way that'd be the easiest way for us just spin the far wheel and it's easier to spin it than this wheel because I've really got nothing on it right so that's all six of them in Actually no it's not, there's one more, sorry. So that's them all in now. And do not put any air tools on these at all. Now you can use, once you've got them in, you can use a little 3.8 air rack that isn't powerful, but you need to tighten them by hand. Taking them off once you've cracked them with an air tool is okay, but an air tool can do a lot of damage very quickly on something like this. Right, so they're all in. They're only hand tight, so they're not tight by any stretch of imagination. What I'm going to do now is I can pop the actual CV joint through the hub, and I'm just going to drop everything on the floor. So after you've just dropped everything on the floor and picked it up, we can then put this bolt on. I'm only putting this on just to stop it from going back through. That's the new bolt that I'm using. Now, what I'm going to do is, camera down, just going to connect, or just loosely connect the uh, bottom wishbone. Now that's connected. Sometimes it's easier to actually connect that before you put this bolt in, but it's not really the end of the world. Nothing is tight yet, I'm just putting everything kind of in loosely. Now what I can actually do to make my life easier, to tighten up them six bolts. Now you need to know which way you tighten them, so obviously we're going this way. So I need to put the vice grips on the bottom. Well I can actually, to be fair, I can put them in between here. That actually isn't going to make any odds for this particular job, so just stick them on there, nice and tight. Now that's actually in there, what this will allow me to do when I pick one, once I start turning it, you'll see the vice grips moving up, they're going to lock in between the carry out the brake, and then I can just squeeze it tight, simply as that. And what I suggest you do, you have to now count these because there's only six. So I'm just going to go around, that's one. No point in me filming because it's going to be exactly the same way. I'm going to tighten all six and then I'll turn the camera back on and we'll continue. Sorted. Right, them six bolts are now tight. And if you want to know how we got to this area, uh, if you watch the first video on the front brakes and the CV joint, that'll explain how all this is off. And like I said on that video, there is adjustment for the camber here. You have to get this tracked, even if... You, you, can, you can line up with the, with the old marks, but honestly, get it tracked. I don't show tracking because not everyone's going to have tracking gauges at home. Even if the car feels good, believe me, just get it tracked. You can do all this work, go down to your local garage, get them to track it. You'll still save yourself a fortune, but honestly, get it tracked. So I'm just going to zip these in with the little uh, air ratchet. <laughs> Tied them by hand. There we go. Now a 30 mil to tighten up the actual drive shaft. Now, what I'll do once I get the brakes and stuff on, I'll tighten that by hand. But that just gives us a really good kind of get it close. Now another thing I've noticed here, what someone has done is they've crossed these wires. On the new brake pad, you get a brake pad sensor. 
Now, don't get me wrong, these are annoying because if you can catch something on the road or a stone hits them, it cuts them off. There's a twig on the road, it can rip these off and send the light on. So they are frustrating. So I know why people do tie them up, cross them together and tie them up. But the problem is you just do not know when your brakes away. And you're best off leaving the connection on. If your light comes on, well then check it out, see what the problem is. Is it that this is cut? Is it that your caliper is seized? Is it that you've worn them down? At least it gives you an indication because if you don't, and it is the pads, well then you're going to destroy your discs where you might only have needed pads. So for the sake of it, definitely sort this connection out and put it on properly. Now you can see what they've done, they've just crossed that, taped them up together. I know why they've done it but I can only advise you not to do it because it could end up costing you more money for that reason. All you do is bang on the brake and like I said if you want to know how we got to this part check out the first video or I think it's the second video when I'm doing the front brakes and the front CV joint that'll explain how we've taken all this off. What I'm going to do is, because I've already done a video on how to do the front pads and discs, I'm not going to show this part because I've already done the video, there's no point showing it twice. But what I will do is once I get the pads and discs on, I'll show you how to reconnect and install the caliper. So I'm going to turn the camera off until I'm ready to do that. Now, as you can see, we've got a nice shiny new caliper. I've just taken off the two plugs. You don't get, well we didn't with this one, we don't get the two new pins. That's not the end of the world because the pins off the other one were still good. I'm just going to pull out this. This is where the actual brake line goes into. And if you remember, we've left the brake uh, line to completely drain, which you wouldn't normally do. But because we're completely flushing out this system because there's too much water in it, uh, that's the way we're doing it. So what's the easiest thing to do now is, you've got the caliper, is put the pad in first, because this pad has to sit inside the caliper. And just be careful of the wire, because that's what's going to tell you on your dash whether your pads are low or not. And then what we can do is just very carefully slide it on. Just going to connect the wire up now before I forget. Because again, it's easily forgotten about. Just clips in. You'll hear a little clip. And there it is. It's simple as that. In. Now what I need to do, because this is going to fall out on me, is put this pin in. I haven't greased it up yet. I got asked a question the other day, what, what grease or the grease I use, how does it react with the pads? I use two different types of grease, I either use high performance molly grease which is really really good stuff or I use um, normal kind of universal grease but the universal grease I use is a high temperature tolerance but the molly grease is definitely better um, and he was asking me you know when, when it heats up does it compact and you have a problem well when you don't clean these yes the grease will compact over you know three or four years and yes that does cause problems but if you clean them every single time you, you change your pads then you will, won't really have a problem provided you use high tension high temperature grease. Now if your pad or your, your caliper starts to seize well then the heat that goes through these is phenomenal and you know you can then start getting uh, problems with the grease compacting because the temperatures is unbelievable. So what I've done is I've just, I've just shoved this on, I've put the first pin in, I've greased the second pin up and I'm just going to slot that in place first to line everything up slot it in place and now we're ready to tighten it. So it was a good question, hopefully I've answered it a little bit better there for him. What we're going to do now is let's screw these in. One and two. It's just important to put these little dust caps back. Stop all the crap getting onto them because if it does you can very easily round the heads of them and make it very difficult to take off. The next thing we need to do, these can go on really easy or they can be a nightmare. I just like to work at one end first to so kind of push it in first and then come around to the second one, push it in, bend it around at the same time and hopefully, yep, it's gone in. Just give it a little tap just to make sure it's seated. A little anti rattle clip. Now what we need to do is just put the actual brake line back. Now like I said, oh let's just turn it up a bit, put some light on. 
normally you wouldn't leave it like I left it because we're completely draining the system this is just it was just because I had to change it, it was just the easiest way for me to leave it just to let it completely come out naturally and uh, with no brake fluid in the system now so we're gonna have to pour new stuff in and bleed them but that's the way we wanted it I hopefully you can see that a bit better so this just needs to go in make sure you don't cross thread this this is a banjo bolt so it's hollow in the middle so it won't take a lot to break so it's vitally important you don't cross thread this because you'll be having major problems then might be still a little bit of fluid left in the line but that's not going to make any difference to us because we're going to have to bleed it anyway so that's all going to come out the little bit that is there and just give this a nice squeeze but not too tight the best thing to do is if you're unsure is just to tighten it once you've led the brakes get someone to press and hold the brakes to make sure it's not leaking because you can very easily over tighten that with it being hollow in the middle with it being a banjo bolt so be very careful of that the next thing we can do is just clamp the connection on for the brake sensor a little click so that's now that's now on make sure it's not going to hit anything it's out of the way that's good so that's got the new caliper on and the new drive shaft what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wedge the disc with a screwdriver and I'm going to tighten up this bolt here for the main drive shaft now I have done videos on how to bleed brakes and even though we've completely drained the system out it's going to be essentially the exact the same way so I'm not going to show you bleeding them but what I suggest you do if you have done this kind of the same way we have is to loosen the bleed nipple fill up the reservoir wait do do this with each break so, so, so do it one break at a time open the bleed nipple wait till it starts coming out naturally just by gravity tighten it up do it to all the brakes you've replaced then pump them properly and actually bleed them like I said I have done loads of bleeding videos so I'm not going to show that but what we are going to do next is we're going to put on the back caliper now on this side they've been a lot nicer we've got a lot more in the kit we've obviously got the new caliper nice and sexy they've even given us grease for the pins we've got two new pins as well which we didn't get with the front and also two new rubbers now that could have come with the with the front kit now we have actually cleaned these and replaced these so these are all good so there's no need to put them on but I'm going to do it but there, there really isn't any need but we have them so we might as well use them so like I said this all could have been with the front kit but it could have been opened by someone else and uh, the bits just went missing out of it and there's two we get the new grease that's supplied with it the new pin slot it on because we might as well I suggest you keep your old pins because you never know when you might need them so next thing we want to do is just put a bit of copper grease here and here give it a good wire brush first then just get your pad to put a little bit on the corners what I like to do I don't like to put any in the middle yet because as you put your finger there you can easily transfer grease onto the actual braking surface which is obviously not a good idea the same with this one And again, if you want to know how we got to this part as regards changing the pads and stuff, if you watch the video where we've done the back pads and discs, that will explain how we've actually got to this part. So there we go. I'm not going to connect anything yet. I'm just going to put it on. I'm going to pull the little pin, little um, thing out there to stop the shit going in. I'm not going to connect anything because it's easier to connect it when it's actually on the car. We get new bolts for this as well, so we'll use it. Push the pins in, make sure the calipers slid in. There we go. Just line them up, and they'll screw in nice and easy. Now, a 13 and a 15 mil spanner will actually tighten these for you. Now, 
once we've got that on, we can then put the handbrake cable on. And that should just be really straightforward. Bend it in underneath the first hole. The rubber can be kind of difficult to get through sometimes. And we're okay with that, that was nice and easy. Don't forget to put back the actual locking pin to actually lock the handbrake onto the disc because otherwise you'll be having problems. And that just pushes in by hand, very easy and straightforward. Now we might be able to push this down by hand. You can on some of the new ones and then just slot this through and as we can see Yep, managed to do it. Simples. You can do that sometimes with the new calipers when you get it, when you're trying to, if you've got a second hand caliper or the one you're using, that might not work all the time. Now, simple. Now, with the actual, one thing I did forget to say, there's two copper washers on these banjo bolts and make sure the copper washers are there because otherwise it will leak. And same thing again, make sure it goes in. Don't cross thread it. Now, like I said, all we've got to do now is actually bleed these. I've done loads of bleeding videos, so I'm not actually going to bleed it on this one. Now, one thing I did forget to mention on this Audi, because we completely let all the fluid drain out, you bleed it normally, um, you open up the little bleed nipples on the caliper, but there's actually two bleed nipples on the cylinder. I'll put a picture up here, and you'll see the two little bleed nipples, which you need to undo as well, because otherwise you'll have no pedal. So, once you pour the fluid in, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, um, I kind of do it, I bleed the calipers first, then bleed the actual cylinder, then what I do is I double bleed the caliper again and go back to the cylinder, so I kind of do it twice, that way you'll know you'll definitely get it, because you'll still have a very soft pedal unless you bleed that uh, cylinder. So that really is essential, that's how to put pads and discs, oh, sorry, it's how to do the back caliper, the front caliper and a drive shaft on a 2000 Audi TT. Nice, simple. Hope it helps. Check out the website, uh, sign up to the forum. Please like, share and subscribe and all that. Don't forget to get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. But yeah, you need to get your face dirty as well. Now, one thing I noticed when I was just uh, looking around, because whenever I do anything, I always double check to make sure everything's fine. And the little spring of the, of the uh, pad was sticking in the wrong place so that's why it's always so important once you've done any job to go back and just double check I do it off camera but I always go back and double check all the bolts make sure everything is right because if I left that that could have caused a problem as you can see now it's in place just tighten the caliper back up and sort it and it took a few seconds but that could have caused a big problem so always always double check everything you do